Welcome. Welcome, Gile Gile, to the Rusty Bug Podcast. Welcome to Rustenberg Podcast and yet again I am here at Topelo Pokoja and I'm, this time I'm not doing it alone. I am actually doing it alone but I've got a lovely guest <laughs> here with us today. Um, quite interesting. Um, I've been at Rustenberg for three years and uh, I don't usually come this side of the, the world but uh, today I've decided to just do a young visit and I was having a conversation before we started recording with Taz and uh, she was just telling me that no way, you've been here for three years and I have not seen your face. How are you, Tess? I'm doing very well, thank you, Tapelo. Yeah, and I've been here 15 years, so... Sure. Yeah, it's and been you've a long time. And you've never seen me in this building? No, I've, ne- <laughs> I've never <laughs> seen you in this building. Yeah. No. Okay, cool. Um, nice to meet you. The, the question Fine. is, have you seen me in this building? Um, I, I think I know every staff member <laughs> okay. in, in this building. It's just that I don't come this side. Yeah. But yeah. but 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 I do know you. It's just mm. that I I haven't been this okay. side. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, how are you? Uh, it's three o'clock right now, and you're still at work, and you're recording. I thought you knock off a little bit early, just like other teachers. No, I don't. I actually yeah. uh, I come in at about uh, eight o'clock in the morning. Sure. And I work right through till half past four. Yeah. Uh, most days, except for Friday, which is my off day, mm-hmm. and it's not an off day, it's an admin day, <laughs> very much an admin yeah. day. Yeah, yeah. I uh, wish I was you so that I don't have to work on Fridays, yeah, <laughs> and I can have yeah. three days weekend, is yeah, it three no, days the, weekend? The, the good thing is that you get to sleep a bit later on a Friday, but yeah. there's a lot of admin in my job, yeah. a huge amount of admin. Okay, let's get to the business of today. Mm. Just like many other people that might not know you, yeah. or what you do at Rustenbeck, yeah. let's do the actual intro. Who are you, and what do you do at Rustenbeck? Okay, so I'm Tess Hawk. I'm an OT, uh, and most of the kids know me as the OT, but OT actually means occupational therapist, and mm. I basically work um, with the kids from grade R up to about grade three, but mostly grade R one and two, mm-hmm. and um, kids with learning issues. So that is my main reason for being here, um, and it's to try and address the barriers to education or barriers to learning. Um, when kids have um, often picked up when kids are not reaching their potential or noticing that their grades in class are not um, where they should be. Okay, you spoke about 15 years that you've been with Rustenbeck. Take me through the journey. When did it start? When did you actually start being an OT? Okay, so I graduated from UCT in 1985. I was not born by then, <laughs> <laughs> just so you know. <laughs> And uh, you probably weren't a thought at that stage either. I wasn't. (laughs) So, yeah, yeah, I graduated in 1985, and my great interest at the time was actually working in psychiatry. So occupational therapists are trained in two areas. We're trained in the physical area that deals with physical difficulties, and that would include, obviously, the the work I'm doing now with children. But it also um, we are also trained in the whole area of psychiatry, so my first uh, my first job, I worked out on the Cape Flats, um, yep. and that was during apartheid times. So the hospitals were all segregated. So I worked in a um, in an alcohol unit, and um, my main aim there was running groups, etc. Yep. And then from there, I went out to enter here on the Mitchell's Plain. And then in 1997, I decided to change course completely, yep. and um, I was uh, asked whether I would join a, an occupational therapy practice privately um, with other OTs treating children, and that's when I decided to move in and start uh, private practice. Yeah, what a journey. Uh, so tell me, let's speak about, let's break it down now. So, sorry, to Perla, yeah. can I also just say that um, obviously I have uh, the occupational therapy degree, but because of my great interest in psychology, yeah. I also have a BA honours in psychology, and I use it a lot in my job. Yeah. Um, yeah, as part of my OT. Listen, my second qualification was um, social services. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've, yeah, I've never done anything with it. Yeah, um, yeah for for the love of marketing. Yeah, but yeah. They're quite interesting there. Yeah. Um, I want to 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 speak about what is an occupation occupational therapist. What does it do? Okay, so the whole aim of occupational therapy is to um, address the functional well being of a human being, whether it be an adult, in fact, all age groups. Um, And what we look at is trying to get the person to function to the best of their ability um, 
And this might be on a social level, it might be on an emotional level, like, for instance, when I worked in psychiatry, or it might even be kids who have got learning difficulties yeah. and trying to get the kids to fully reach their potential. And, um, yeah. Okay. Let's paint a picture now. Mm. What is it on a day-to-day um, what you would do, for example, if a child comes in here? Or maybe let's take it step by step. Yes. From a classroom, from grade R. Okay. Does a teacher then say, I think this child needs to see an OT or what's the actual process? Okay. And when the child comes to see you, what kind of activities okay. do you do okay. with the child? So the way it works is um, I'm in the medical profession. I'm yes. not in education. So yes. that's that's the, uh, the... So being in the medical profession, I need to have a referral. Yes. So I can't go out looking for work as in identifying children and, and phoning parents and saying your child needs to come and see me. Yes. The teacher has to pick up on the difficulties and obviously they often ask my opinion, is this a problem or not? And then the teacher makes the referral after talking to the parent. The parent then contacts me and we set up an assessment. And the assessment starts with firstly a parent interview after just to try and um, analyze what's going on, where the problems may lie, yeah. and a bit of a background history. And then I do the full assessment and then I do uh, feedback with the parents. And the feedback is talking about the difficulties that have come up in the assessment and we basically discuss the way forward and how we're going to do that. Yeah. So that's the process of getting a child into therapy yeah and then based on whatever difficulties they've got let's say they've got gross motor difficulties and this mm. has also been picked up for instance in uh phys ed by the yeah. phys ed teachers we would i would then use activities because kids are kids we yeah. use games and activities to address their difficulties and these are some of the th- i mean the equipment around me is some of the equipment that we will use to address some of those physical difficulties yeah okay I mean, when I walked into this office, I was like, hey, this office, I'd like this to be my office. Yeah, it's like a, it's a playground. It's a playground. Lo- lots of things. So, yeah. uh, so what, for example, is there a practical example that maybe you can give? Um, is there a way that parents can have a, a lookout from home? So, for example, let's say my child is having learning uh, difficulties um, and then the teacher is not picking up, but I, as a parent, maybe I'm worried because of certain results yeah, or yeah. something like yeah. that. Yeah. Is there signs to that? Okay, so when I do the um, parent interview, I will often hear parents say to me, I noticed that there was something wrong. I just knew something wasn't quite right. So it's very seldom that parents come to me and I say, my very first question is, how do you feel about this uh, referral? Um, and have you ever picked up anything yourself? And very few parents actually say to me, no, they haven't picked it up. They can pick it up. So if it's a fine motor difficulty, you'll notice that kids are, their fine motor work is just not on par for where it is. Or the child's avoiding fine motor work. They don't want to have to do fine motor work. And boys, uh, I don't want to... um, Uh, say boys are worse than girls with fine motor but boys are basically outdoor beings and they like to play outdoors and so fine motor work for them is quite tricky at times and also with the whole area of screen time uh, fine motor work is not something that kids do anymore because they spend a lot of time in front of the screens and then obviously you know you've got your kids who battle with hopping and skipping and jumping and they don't want to play outside Uh, because they're scared or they're scared to get their feet off the ground. That's why we have the swings, because we try and encourage them to get their feet off the ground and to feel comfortable and safe, even though their feet are off the ground. And then obviously you've got the learning difficulties. um, where And and often this is picked up at an early age, uh, even at a preschool level. The the teachers will start saying to the um, um, parents, you know, they're not recognizing their sounds or they're not recognizing their letters or their spatial yeah. their spatial layout of their pictures on their page is 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 um, difficult for them, you know. So they get a big page and then they get asked to draw a person or an animal or something like that and they use a tiny little bottom corner. Yeah. They can't use the whole page. So you start picking up on things like that. Yeah. It's interesting that you mentioned uh, screen time and and play, uh, which is um, a lot of arguments that's been around yeah. actually on social yeah. media. Maybe yeah. we can address some yes. things, those type of things. So yes. I don't know if you, you are familiar with Mrs. Miss Rachel. Yes. Um, 
she does a song hop little bunny hop 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 <laughs> oh, i even learned the song <laughs> i'm coming new dad by the way yeah. so so uh you'd find me myself and pam uh, just chilling in the office singing along to that watching yes. some videos because uh, pam's granddaughter will do the hopping hop yes. little bunny from yes. screen you know yeah. so does that make screen time good then or not or or what screen does that time, do screen time is all about um how much time you spend on the screen yeah. and what you are doing on the screen So um most OTs I think would agree with me that it's maximum half an hour screen time a day. Yeah. To be safe. Yeah. Um I've been in restaurants I was at a coffee shop yesterday and there was a child who couldn't have been more than 3. Yeah. Who could work the screen of her father's phone faster than I can and yeah. she's 3 years old. Um so it's not it's not about um it's very much about how much time you spend on screen and what you're doing on screen so when i advise parents about screen time i will say to them your child needs to ask you i want to watch this yeah or i want to play this game that it shouldn't be coming onto screen and uh just becoming a couch potato and you flash through the channels on tv because you're bored and you don't feel like going out to do anything else yeah it should be a program or a series or a game that you want to do when that game's over when that particular program's over the tv goes off yeah um and there is no doubt that screen time is hugely impacting kids at the moment i'm noticing yeah uh in the work that i do that kids do not communicate anymore it's frightening yeah and the latest that i've been getting is when i ask a child how are you or what did you do for the weekend the latest is huh <laughs> and i yeah. say to them what does huh mean okay and they say i don't know yeah is there an opportunity to perhaps integrate technology with what you do i mean technology is shifting and it's moving yeah. Yeah. we're talking ai yeah. now yeah. you know what i mean yeah, sure. and is there a way for for the near future because the kids that we're raising today screen time is so important to them like and yeah, technology they're so exposed more than we are i yeah. mean you just mentioned yeah. right now about that 3 year old that knows mm. that was mm. moving the phone yeah, and navigating yeah, the phone yeah, more than yeah. the actual parent yeah, would do yeah um i don't know about bringing screens into our work yeah. um i'm sure there are um probably going to there're going to be activities that are developed where we can do it on screens i'm very anti screens yeah. so you they get enough screens at home yeah. i'm very much into play because they don't often get enough play yeah. so as long as i can keep screens out of here the parents can deal with that my aim is to get the kids to play either on a fine motor level on a physical level to try and get them to in, and and to engage with me and i mean that's where my psychology comes in is that i want to talk to the kids kids will talk to me about thing they will talk to me about uh, using words like things or that one and I'll say to them what is a thing yeah you use the word rather than thing um yeah so i i i'm not mad about screens um because i think they get enough screen time out of out of uh, school yeah okay let's speak now about the the benefits what are the main benefits not even actually sorry to use the word the main what are the benefits of seeing an ot okay so um the main benefit in terms of age groups is the younger the child comes in the better the outcome okay yeah. and the reason being is that when you're seeing a kid who's 5 or 6 years old or even younger in some practices I don't treat uh, younger than that they are like balls of clay mm. and this is why we do the screenings in uh, grade R at Rustenburg because we want to pick up if there are any difficulties that could in the bigger picture cause m- uh, more serious problems than what they're presenting with so what i found is when i'm treating with the grade r's they like clay you can actually mold them session by session by session and from this week to next week you can see the difference you can yeah. see that they are are changing already when they get to grade 3 they've learned bad habits now it's having to try and break those habits and also grade 3 is already at an age where they're starting to um have a bit of an attitude and they don't want to come out of class to to do this kind of stuff where where's the little ones you can change and and shift them so easily or so much more easily yeah um, depending on the yeah and and i mean the the results in ot is amazing 
They are yeah. amazing. And the yeah. younger they are, the better the results, actually. I don't know if you get this question often, but when you see an OT as a child, does that mean uh, there is difficulties with that child or is it for every child? So I would say, I would like to say that mm. uh, difficulties are on a spectrum. Mm. Okay. So, um, and when I say that, um, you get some kids who are absolutely amazing at physical stuff. You get some kids who are mediocre. They, they, yeah. they play the C team in rugby and hockey and they're in the B team with swimming. And then you get those ones that really, really do struggle. Um, yeah. So, yeah. I forgot your question. <laughs> no, it is about the fact that, like, is seeing an OT for everyone or is it for... Oh, for, okay. for yeah. So it's funny, parents do sit here sometimes and mm. they say, so many kids go to OT. Mm. Couldn't everyone just be treated? Well, I suppose they could. It depends yeah. where you want your child to be. But there is definitely a difference between a child who has a problem mm. and a child who is managing. Okay. And ultimately what we want is we want the best for our kids. We want yeah. our kids to be to reach the potential. And you take a simple thing like um, like the gross motor development. Mm. You know, parents might say to me, but so what if they don't hop? And, and in the bigger picture, I mean, as adults, I mean, really, what did hopping teach us? The fact is that kids play. And when you're in a group of, of girls or you go to phys ed and you're yeah. the only one who can't skip across the hall, mm. you're the only one who can't hop, it impacts you. That's the difference. Sure. Yeah. I never thought about it that way. Yeah, hey, yeah. Sure. So although it may not in the bigger picture be mm. an issue, it definitely makes kids feel left out. And I say the same about screen time. Yeah. Parents will say to me, um, uh, you know, should I just ban screen time altogether? And I say no, because if you ban that, your child comes to school, everybody's talking about the latest screen or game or whatever, and you're the only one who doesn't know that uh, game. Yeah. So you need a bit of it. You need a bit of everything. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and then let's speak about the importance of the relationship of an OT, a teacher, and a parent. Because, yeah. I mean, this child is at home, yeah. then moves from home, comes to school in a classroom yes. with the teacher, yeah. and then from there comes to see you. Yes. Which, in my head, I'm assuming you would still need support regardless of the environment that right. you are. Right. You know, you can't be um, you putting in the work here, yeah. but in the classroom, yeah. they actually... Yeah kind of undoing it yeah. or at home they're yeah. kind of undoing yeah. it yeah the importance of that those three people that i've mentioned i'm very much a team uh player yeah. i love working as a team i don't see my kids as a number i never see any of my kids as a number mm. i see them in the context of their family yeah and that's why that initial interview with parents is so important because it gives me some context mm. in which this kid lives in which they grew up etc and that is always in the back of my mind. With regards to the teacher, it's really, really important. And that's why schools have OT ba you know, OTs based at the school, so that we are constantly in contact with the teachers on a daily basis. So yeah. you know, I might go down and fetch a child and the teacher says to me, they're having a really bad day today. I know, and I can then bring them up here and maybe chat to them or just try and understand where they're coming from. Yeah. Also, if I'm working on a specific thing, I can say to the teacher, listen, this is what I'm working on at the moment. Mm. Can I ask you just to keep an eye on it in class and try and focus in on that as well, and vice versa. Yeah. They may be working on something, and they'll say to me, Tess, can you please focus in on this? This is not coming right at the moment. Can you spend a bit more time on this? Yeah. And then with regards to the parents... I desperately need parents on my side. So we do live also living more and more in the era where parents tend to dump their kids. They have au pairs, they have tutors, you know, everybody else is working. And I understand that because both parents work and they're often long days. Yeah. But it's really important that parents are on my side. And the most important thing there is communication. When I send them a communication, I want parents to respond to that communication. And there's absolutely no doubt that when those three people are working together, the child, myself, sorry, four people, the child, myself, yep. the teacher, and the parent, you get the best results. I can see kids straight away who are working at home with their parents compared to those that don't. Yeah. And, and things change way faster when parents are actually working with their children at home. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. It's a okay. very, very important relationship that. Yeah. Yeah. And now, um, let me ask you. Let me ask you this question. Um, 
for the parents that, for example, the teachers have picked up challenges with the kids or difficulties and they've consulted with you and you've mm. made contact with the parents and the parents just say, nah, nothing is wrong with my child, whether they be in denial uh, because I know a lot of uh, people don't like receiving those type yeah. of news, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, and they, what are the, what are the dangers of ignoring or not even engaging or saying, let me see what, how my child could be, could get help. So parents, some parents take time mm. to come around and eventually they do come around yeah. because they hear the same story and it might even take a year, year and a half. Yeah. They've heard the story in grade R, they hear the story again in grade one, the teachers are not related, yeah. they're picking up on the same sort of things and yeah. then they do come around. So at times we have to give parents that time. Yeah. But what parents need to understand in that is that we are wasting time all the time. So mm. if you decide to wait until next year... We have wait, wasted 18 months where we could have actually s resolved that issue before you start next year. Yeah. Um, we can't force parents to come, um, but honestly, uh, it's important when you get feedback from your teacher saying that your child is not, and it does not mean that your it has nothing, and I think this is where parents struggle sometimes, it has nothing yeah. to do with how bright your child is. It's got nothing to do with that at all. So when you get that feedback, we are not telling you that there is something wrong with your child cognitively. Sure. We are saying to parents, they are not reaching their full potential. Let's give them that opportunity to get to the best they can be. Yeah. That is what we're pushing for. Sure. Okay. I think you've, you've actually put it so nice because yeah. like you would think, your child is not smart enough. Yeah. And and you'll find out that they're not using their yeah. full capabilities yeah. to actually yeah. achieve yeah. what they need yeah. to achieve. And I have children here who are just super smart. Yeah. And most of them are super smart. Um, they're super smart in lots of different areas, mm. cognitively, mm. in their personalities, mm. just as little beings. They yeah. are super smart. So it's not a reflect and it's not a reflection on parents either in terms of their upbringing. So it's got nothing to do with parents and them having done something wrong. Mm. It is just who your child is and it's also got to do with the expectations of a school like Rustenburg. Mm. Okay, we've got to, you've got to be, you've got to hit it running. You can't be on the back step all the time um, because at the end of the day, if you're on the back step, it impacts your child's uh, self-esteem. Yeah. And um, I think probably the last two questions mm. as what message would you like to uh, tell the parents about the job that you do? It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love my work. I'm absolutely passionate about it. I love working with children. I'm a child at heart. I have a huge amount of fun with them. Um, I have kids uh, at school who greet me all the time. I don't know who they are because they are... They are just in the class, but they know me. I don't know them, yeah. and and uh, I'm, I'm 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 always having fun with the kids. So um, it's again, OT is not it's not boring. Sometimes parents will say to me, "My kid doesn't want to leave class." I say to them, "But every child would want to leave class to come and play, you know, yeah. um, and just have fun." And we use the play and the fun to to get the goals that we're trying to reach. Yeah. Yeah, and lastly, when. It's all said and done, and when you walk out of Rustenberg one day, how do you want to be remembered? The best OT ever. And that's what I strive for every day. I strive to be my best yeah. all the time. And I strive, I work hard to get my kids to where I want them to be. Mm. And I think the letters that I receive from parents basically tells me that I'm mostly achieving. You don't always achieve what you want there will always be the parents who don't appreciate. Yeah. But mostly, parents really appreciate what I do. And I love I love what I do. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> that was lovely and amazing.